Well, thank you, Tim. Uh, Riverkeeper has been following the Indian Point issue for two decades uh, in terms of its potential risks for health and safety. And the more you learn about the risks to health and safety from Indian Point, the more you understand that it must close. We're also following the issue of replacement energy. The more you learn about the availability of replacement energy, the more you realize Indian Point needs to close. Indian Point is too dangerous, and it is holding us back from maximizing safe, sustainable, carbon-free energy. Now, in the past year alone, which we at Riverkeeper call uh, energy's uh, very, very bad, all too horrible year, there have been seven unplanned closures at Indian Point. There has been a huge increase in radioactive contamination in the groundwater. There has been a fire and a major oil leak into the Hudson. There has been most recently a determination that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission staff have grossly underestimated the potential damage an accident at Indian Point could do. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission does not overrule its staff on any kind of a frequent basis. And they said that the staff's failure to consider the seriousness of the risks at Indian Point and the damage that would be done by an accident at Indian Point renders the analysis of safety measures Indian Point must implement as part of the relicensing, relicensing procedure grossly insufficient. And I'm hoping that fellow in the back is from Entergy because I want them to hear this. Entergy is putting America at risk. Entergy is jeopardizing the risk, is creating a risk that the entire Northeast could be damaged beyond repair. And you know what that would mean to our economy. You know that would mean to the world economy. The damage that Mr. Freeman referred to, to the interior core walls of the reactor, is unprecedented. There is four times more failed bolts in the core of reactor number two than in the next most seriously damaged reactor in the world. No one at Energy expected this. No one at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission expected this. This is causing them no end of consternation. Westinghouse as well. They have reconsidered whether they need to do testing in reactor three, and they've moved it up from 2019 to 2017, that retesting should be immediate. When you have a nuclear facility that this is this old, that is near this many people, that has been found by this many federal agencies not to have an adequate means of dealing with the risk of terrorism to the spent fuel pools, that has had this many mishaps, failed, uh, events uh, that have led to electrical failures, loss of power to control rods, uh, uh, water pooling on the floor where switch room electrical equipment is kept that could have jeopardized the entire safe operation of the facility. You've just got to come to the conclusion that Riverkeeper has come to. Riverkeeper did not start off with a preconceived notion that this plant needs to close, but when you have seven unplanned shutdowns in one year, when you have groundwater contamination due to leaks in uh, refueling uh, vessels, when you have uh, the damage to the core of the reactor that has been found uh, by the ultrasonic testing in the last six months, which Entergy would not have done if not for New York State and Riverkeeper and Clearwater's insistence as part of the relicensing procedure, and you have the availability of replacement power that is at an unprecedented level, 1,500 megawatts worth of new energy available in the last two or three years alone, and, and this is the most important thing, a reduction in the estimate of demand for power on the hottest day of the summer 2016 by the system operator, the New York Independent System Operator, a nonprofit whose job it is to keep the lights on. They, in the last six months, have reduced their estimate of the peak demand in the summer of 2016 by 514 megawatts. And 1,500 megawatts of newly available power plus a decline in demand of over 500 megawatts equals more than Indian Point produces. And even Indian Point, even energy in its rhetoric, 
does not question the notion that you could close Indian Point tomorrow. They tacitly admit that by saying that it is not a smart idea. Well, it's not a smart idea for them, but it is a smart idea for the safety of the Northeast United States, the entire United States. It's a smart idea to drive new renewable energy and demand side management. The only smart, the only prudent move for here, us here in the New York area, for the entire United States, is to close Indian Point and move to safe, sustainable sources of energy immediately. If you strip away the rhetoric if you strip away the speculation, if you just look at the facts on the ground, you know that this plant's time has come and gone. I've been told that by countless people who are like Mr. Freeman, experts in this field, nuclear engineers, people familiar with the physics and the chemistry and the mechanical engineering of that plant. It is a willful ignorance of reality to think that this plant can continue to safely operate given what we've seen there in the last year and before that as well. And in view of the availability of replacement energy as documented by the New York Independent System Operator, by Riverkeeper, by our expert witnesses in the hearing, it is doubling down on insanity to keep Indian Point open when there are better, safer, more sustainable options available today.